Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to an all-new reaction and review. Now, tonight, guys, I'm going to be breaking my protocol slightly, because um, for those of you who regularly watch me, you you might have picked up a little bit, of, a little bit of a pattern uh, when it comes to the movies I cover, and that's I find something that came off of the wish list, and then the following week I do something that I bought or I downloaded, and then the next week I go back to the wish list, and the pattern continues. Wish list something for me, wish list something for me. Well, this time around, I was going to do something that I bought at a yard sale. In fact, the disc is still here, and I might actually cover it at some point. But then I uh, found something in my mailbox today. Well, actually, it was yesterday, but I checked the mail just just a couple of minutes ago, and it was right there. So, um, yeah. This thing is going to take precedence, because this is one of the most requested films in the history of reaction and re review. For whatever reason, this film has sparked tons and tons of people to send me messages and say, I really have to cover this thing. It is a film from 2010. The title, this title, I hate this title. It sounds really stupid. The title is Birdemic Shock and Terror. Yeah, guys, that actually is the full title. Birdemic Shock and Terror. Um, now, I actually have the IMDB page open here, and I'm looking at the movie's poster, which I should mention. The poster is just this image, minus, like, minus the title, and then it has all the information on, on the bottom in a big, in a big blank space that looks almost like somebody whipped it whipped it together in about two minutes using MS Paint. It's usually a bad sign when your movie poster was cobbled together in fucking MS Paint, I just want to say. Now, I'm looking at the back here, and uh, they have a blurb. It's from CBS Sunday Morning, a, a show that I don't think any of my viewers watch, and even, and, 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 and even I barely fucking tune in. And the blurb says, the best worst movie of all time. If this movie does not live up to that standard, I'm going to send an angry letter to CBS Sunday morning because I find myself to be a connoisseur of bad movies. So this thing has very, very high expectations for me because if this thing is the best bad movie of all time, that means it has to outdo films such as Plan 9 and Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. This thing has a long way to go. So, I am about to find out if this film from 2010 is as, is as good as many of the other classic B-movies of days gone by. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Birdemic Shock and Terror. Alright, film's barely started, guys, and I'm going to tell you right now, this movie has the worst sound out of any film I have ever seen. I am going to go into more detail on that when I actually do the fucking review of this, but I just sort of wanted to mention, the sound in this film really fucking sucks. So that newscast was using stock footage. Do you know how I could tell that it was stock footage because it had the because it had the Getty Images watermark over it? How cheap does your movie have to be where you can't even get stock footage that doesn't have that fucking watermark? That guy's is just that now that guy's is just fucking laziness. I'm just going to say that right now. So this guy has a hybrid Mustang. It gets 100 miles per gallon. I know nothing about cars. I'm curious. Is there even such a car? Is there actually a hybrid Mustang that gets 100 miles to the gallon? Are there any hybrid cars that get 100 miles to the fucking gallon? That just seems a little bit much. Okay, guys, I would like to say this right now. So far, everything, everything about the title of this film is a flat-out lie. All right? We are this far in. I have seen barely any fucking birds. There has been nothing shocking. The only thing terrifying is the fact that people actually financed a movie this fucking terrible. Okay. Two things. One, 
These bird sounds are ridiculously annoying. Two, these are the shittiest. These these are the shittiest effects I have ever seen. You know, guys, I actually would just like to take a moment here to, uh, as this movie continues to trudge on, I just want to apologize to people such as Doug Walker and Lucifer Valentine and Tommy Wiseau. You did not make the worst movie I've ever seen. Not even close. Not even by a long shot. Jesus Christ. Okay, I get it. I fucking get it. This film is trying to tell us the evils of global fucking warming. I would really like it better if the film didn't didn't fucking try to bludgeon us to fucking death with its fucking message. It fails at giving the message in a decent way, and it makes me want to go out and just burn a big barrel of oil just to spite the filmmakers. Let me see if I've got this shit straight. They meet up with a tree hugger who tells them that the birds are targeting people who are in their fucking cars or at gas stations. They go to the beach, they see the birds, first thing they do, climb back into the fucking car. Wouldn't you have been safer on the goddamn beach? I want to find the person who wrote this. I want to shoot him in the goddamn face. I really fucking do. Oh, thank you fucking God, it's done. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. I'm, I'm speechless. No, fuck this. No, fuck you. I'm not taking the disc out. No. Because I fear that if I take that fucking disc out, I'm going to snap it in two, and then I'm going to slit my wrist with the fucking shards. Let's start. I said it earlier. I will say it again. Fucking hey man, my chair's squeaking today. This is the worst movie I have ever seen. Not just for reaction and review. Period. I had more fun watching fucking kick ass. Yeah, I had more fun watching Slaughtered Vomit Dolls. I had more fun watching Boku no Pico. Yeah, I would rather watch animated kitty porn than watch this shit again. If they ever opt to put this thing out on, on DVD again, I actually think that would be a nice blurb to put up to put up on the front. Animated kitty porn is better than this. Oh, God. That is just awful. Okay. Where the fuck to even start? Well, when in doubt, start with the acting. I would say that the acting is wooden, but that would be an insult to other films that have wooden acting. This makes... Hayden Christensen's performance in the Star Wars prequels look like fucking gold. This makes any, any, any fucking example I could give for bad acting look good. Because, you know, there is a, I guess there's a very thin line between uh, the acting being wooden and being totally lifeless. This one is on, this one is much, much more the latter than it is the former. The acting here is completely lifeless and there is no charm at all. The characters are as shallow as they come. By the way, speaking of the acting, the two kids in this film, if I ever see them in public, if I'm ever in California and I see these two kids, I don't care who the hell sees me, I don't care if their parents are there. I will punch them right in the fucking face until my until my fist goes fucking numb. That was some of the worst acting I have ever seen from anyone. Those those kids are a textbook reason. I mean, or, or correction, they actually are a textbook example of how not to act. And everybody else is no fucking better. All right, but those kids were just irritating, partially because their dialogue was just. I'm hungry. I hurt. I, oh man, I want a fucking Happy Meal. Fuck you, you're not getting a goddamn Happy Meal, you little faggot. You are on the beach. Shut the fuck up. Oh my god, this movie is just so awful. <laughs> the writing. Speaking of wanting a Happy Meal on the beach, let's talk about the writing. <laughs> oh my god, the writing. I don't think that there was a script for this. I just think that the script 
was made up of uh, uh, was just made up of, of like a handful of sentences. One of them was, "Birds are attacking." The other one is, "Preach about global warming," because that's all this film has. It has that, and it has probably one of the shittiest romance stories I have ever seen, because. Once more, there is no life in these fucking actors, so I don't care when our two main characters hook up. Seriously, I really just do not fucking care. Um, and when it comes to the preaching about global warming, uh, and just talking about how we need to invest in solar, in fucking solar panels and hybrid cars, all of it feels just so forced that it really doesn't help help out their their case at all i mean because our main character mentions that he drives a hybrid mustang that gets 100 miles to the gallon i don't think you can buy a ford mustang that is that is a high that is a plug-in hot plug-in like hybrid much less a hybrid in general that gets 100 miles to the fucking gallon okay so I would like to know exactly what fantasy world they fucking pulled. They pulled that little bit of info from. And just when you thought you had heard enough, they they then opt to shoehorn in one one shot against against our well our you know at the time war in our war in Iraq. Yeah, because one because one of our characters was a former fucking marine who quit because he was sick and tired of all of of all of the death and killing yet he keeps an assault rifle in his van sure you are you are sick and tired of killing and you're going to keep a very deadly weapon inside your vehicle at all times sure bud makes total sense i also believe that's where everybody else got got their fucking pistols was from our fucking anti-war soldier apparently he keeps a fucking armory in his goddamned minivan oh jesus christ effects let's talk about the effects worst i've ever seen in any goddamn movie see i would probably have found the film a little bit charming if the birds were just birds on fishing line that, that, that actually would have been cheesy, would have been kind of cute and sort of funny. It would have been worth seeing. Instead, they have what look, they have what look to be GIFs lifted, lifted directly, directly from a Google image search, plastered directly onto the shot. You could probably, you, you could probably achieve the very same effect using Sony Vegas. It's really sad because, because that is really the, the, the only effect they have is just plastering gifts from fucking Google onto onto the picture. You could probably do it in fucking in fucking Sony Vegas and the opening and closing credits look as if they were created in, in Windows Movie Maker. So yeah, this film is really, really going out and go and going with the highest end editing software possible. Oh my god. And that really is it for, you know, effects. I don't often talk about this, but I would like to I'd like to talk about sound for just a second. Because sound is a big issue with this movie. Because, well, the sound sucks. You see, because you will have characters in the same shot. And from one angle, it's totally quiet. And from the other angle, there's tons of background noise. Which makes all of these scenes very dis-fucking-jointed. Which tells me that... Which tells me that the visionary director, as is listed on the fucking back of the DVD case here, doesn't know what the fuck it means to loop in dialogue when your sound quality is dog shit. But no, he doesn't know, and he didn't bother to put it in. All right. Frankly, I would like to find this fucking this you know this you know fucking director, and I and I and I want to beat him to death. I do not just want to beat him soundly, and I do not want to beat him stupid. I want to kill the man with my bare hands. There is no excuse for making a movie that is this fucking bad. And if he was trying to make a movie that that was intentionally bad, well, good job. You, you were able to intentionally make a piece of shit. I hope you're fucking proud. Frankly, guys, I don't see any reason to watch this. See, because a lot of people were telling me that this movie is so bad it's good. No, it isn't. Plan 9 is so bad it's good. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is so bad it's good. 
Okay. This is not that. This thing is torture. There is absolutely nothing cute, funny, or interesting about this movie. It is 90 minutes of pain and suffering, which is trying to pass itself off as the horror equivalent of an inconvenient truth. By the way, they, they, they also plug an inconvenient truth at one point in this film. That, that actually is how, that it, that is how ham-handed their message of trying to save the earth is in this thing. Frankly, guys, if anyone ever ever tells you that you that you should watch this, just punch them, punch them right in the fucking face because there is no reason to watch this. In fact, the in fact the very the in fact the very fact that this thing exists in any form makes me physically ill. Okay, I seriously am holding back, throwing up at the very thought that this goddamn thing actually exists and that somebody wanted to put it out on DVD. This thing is a fucking crime against cinema. Now, Birdemic came off of the wish list. Surprise, surprise. And also, uh, this really should not come as a shock. Uh, it came from a friend of mine, David. Yes, the guy who sends me such interesting films as Collision Course and Mr. Wrong, he sent this one as well. You can find his YouTube channel over on Little Ridley Stairs. By all means, guys, swing over there, check it out, because it actually is him and a couple other guys, and, and their stuff is pretty good. And uh, I would like to mention that he actually sent me a movie, and this was years, and this was like a couple years back, and this was before, this was before Reaction and Review. The movie was called Illegal Aliens. Which is a sci-fi comedy starring Anna, starring Anna Nicole Smith and former professional wrestler China. I thought that thing was the worst movie I had ever seen. David, thank you. You actually have found something that was officially worse than Illegal Aliens. Jesus, fucking Christ, this thing was bad. In fact, be, now before I go, I would like to say that my younger brother, when he was about sixteen or so, uh made a film with a bunch of his friends. It was a 20-minute black-and-white horror film. And uh, let me tell you, that 20-minute black-and-white film had better acting, better effects, better sound, better writing, better fucking cinematography. It was a better film all fucking around. And it had maybe a budget of 50 bucks, all right? This thing, I have no idea what in the hell the, the budget was, but if this thing was made for anything more than, say... I'd, I'd probably go about as far as to say about $3,000. If this thing cost more, cost more than that, then somebody should be fucking ashamed. This thing is just, this thing is, this thing is a waste of time. This thing is a waste of money. And the DVD is a waste of plastic. I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw this fucking thing out because there's no reason to keep it. And I don't think that any place would actually buy it from me. However, I am probably going, going to try to sell it first because... I want, because I just want to get at least a little bit of joy out of this, and if I get maybe like a buck off it, I'll be happy. And with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.